You certainly are. Thank you, Indianola. Thank you for watching. We have a lot to get to. Some incredible finishes in Class 5A and in all classes, basically. But before we do, let's start with our game of the week. We just saw the Indianola cheerleaders, and Jeff Dubrov joins us now live. And Jeff, cheer for. I don't know if they do the push-ups after the points out there, but I'm sure they were uh, waving those pom-poms all night long. <laughs> Yeah, Scott, I didn't see any push-ups tonight, but you're right. Lots of cheering for the Indianola cheerleaders, fans, and students section as they hosted Boone. Not even close. Let's get to the highlights. Both of these teams, three and two entering this game. You could say they're on the bubble looking for a playoff spot. And let me tell you, Indianola with some home cooking. It started with Jake Pontier busting his way through. Going to find the big box. Indian strike first make it seven nothing. Andrew DeWall led this team on multiple drives, ending with some QB sneaks, calling the, into the old Iowa playbook, except they got in the end zone, 14 nothing. He wasn't done either before the uh, end of the first half. DeWall, another QB sneak, 21 nothing at the end of the first half. Boone was just not even able to get past the 50 yard line. Indian O looks strong. Let's go to the second half where it was more of the same, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. DeWall, a quarterback sneak again. 28 0. It was all Indian Ola. How about some defense, though, for Boone? They're threatening. And Indian Ola is DeWall, rush pocket. Throwing over the middle. Christian Ingram going to come down with this tip pass. Boone was not able to make anything of it. Very next drive for the Indians. They're going to score. Ethan McDonald punches it in. Indianola cruises. Final score here, 35 to nothing. This team looked good. It's definitely a bounce back from last week. We kind of started out slow. We weren't very consistent. And this week, we kind of just buckled down and got to work and put our heads down and you know, just got better. I think this was a very good win for us. The state, it was a very good statement win, and we're ready to go for uh, North Polk next week. Yeah, you heard Jake Pontier there. He had a really nice game running the ball. Uh, they have North Polk on the road next week. Following that, 8 a.m. on October 13th right here at Indianola Stadium. So a playoff push is going to rely on those two games. Going to be really interesting to see how the Indians do down the stretch. Reporting live from Indianola Stadium, Jeff Dubroff, KCCI, Iowa Sports Leader. Thanks, Jeff. Great work out there. Dowling has slayed all challengers this season. Tonight, what an ending against Centennial as the Jags try to be the first team to take down Dowling. At home, Jags in black, and they struck first. Watch Trenton Smith hand off to Elijah Porter. Elijah had himself a game. Goes through a couple Dowling players. at 7 nothing. Still in the first, Porter takes another handoff. Delayed handoff, he goes left, uses his blockers, and it's 14-0 Centennial. Dowling is ranked either first or second, depending on which rankings you use. Under that full orange moon, they get their act together. Rashad Davis gets Dowling on the board right here with a touchdown. So here's what happens. Centennial had a chance to win it at the end or tie it. They had the ball at the Dowling two, down by seven. On fourth and goal, Centennial throws it. And Kenyon James picks it off and goes 100 yards the other way, giving Dowling a thrilling 30 to 17 win. Wow. All right, Johnson, Southeast Polk. Let's go to the end of the third quarter. Southeast Polk up just by three, 31 28. But CJ Phillip, how do you do? Puts him up 38 to 28. Johnson would eventually cut it to within three, but the Rams were able to hold on and they do win 38 to 35. Ankeny at Cedar Rapids Prairie. Check out the intro that Prairie had. They had the burning P under the scoreboard. It means it's homecoming out there in Cedar Rapids. They had the fireworks popping. John Wallfield. But Ankeny doesn't want the smoke. They got David Blaine out there. Look at this trickery. First play, Luke Anderson to Devin Akers to Evan Earlmeyer. And then Daniel Laramie is going to put Ankeny on the board later in the first quarter. They led 10-0 at halftime, and Ankeny gets it done, barely 17-14. Also, Waukee Northwest wins 31-28 over Valley. Waukee stomps Lincoln 58 zip. We got the wild card road trip up next. And as we go to break, here's some fans from I-35.
I like that kid out there with the shades and the fro <laughs> and the double thumbs up. Yeah, he goes, what do I say? I <laughs> say, it's football Friday night. Say whatever you please. Yeah, Shannon Earhart here and a little small, very small down there. Yeah, that's, that's the, the, <laughs> there she is, really small. <laughs> this is what I look like in real life. Um, yeah. This is the Audubon cow, world famous, the world bull. largest. Sorry, the bull. That's so <laughs> embarrassing. The bull. the bull. I'm with the bull. Let's start with the game. This was cool, but the game was even better. Audubon took on Glidden Ralston, finally got it right. Here Ralston. under three minutes left in the first quarter. Aaron Olson, a handoff to Evan Alt, puts it in drive, swerves a safety, makes the 40 yard dash to the end zone. This is the two point conversion. High snap, Olson settles, scans, throws. It's off balance, but doesn't matter. The pass is made by Colton Hansen, a defensive tackle, it's 8-0 Audubon. The Wheelers up 16-0, Wildcats on the two-yard line. That's Colby Wallace who punches it in, stretches his way over the goal line. Wheelers have the ball again, motion out wide. Olsen hangs in the pocket, heaves it to the middle of the field. Austin Christensen, where did you come from? Moves like Jagger. A few plays later, Olsen uses his legs, and he's got the stability and the speed. The QB hurry put it back at a two-score game. Audubon will fend off Glidden Ralston 34-20 despite a fourth quarter surge. In Glenwood at Winterset, Winterset in black with the ball. Well, let's take a look at the moon. I don't know who captured that, but thank you. That was a uh, snickerdoodle coon. Oh, yes, it was. Winterset with the ball. That's over the top. Caught by big old Cade White on the slant. Winterset fakes a field goal on this next play. It's fourth down. Will he make it? It's hanging. No, not good enough. That flips the chains. It'll be Glenwood ball. Peyton Longmire here with it to Trent Patton. He goes to the house. Glenwood ends up rolling 42-14. All right, here come the Cubs. Nevada hosting Knoxville. Cubs in the house. Seven nothing first quarter. Nevada's Case and Stevenson. Strolls untouched. Nobody touched him. Look how easy this is. 35 yards is 14 nothing Cubs and the King is happy. That kind of night for Nevada. Connor King, a quick flare to Kyle Kingsbury for a touchdown. 60 yards, Nevada, 43 nothing. Homecoming at Roland Story and they came out ready. Opening drive, a quick swing pass from Sam Knoll to Jonathan Wilkinson for a big 18 yard gain. Look at him go the wheels. Later in the drive, fourth and two, the Norsemen go for it. Noel finds Wilkinson again, this time on a screen, and he will go 24 yards for the Tutty. 7-0, Norse. Green County is unable to move the ball, and they should not punt it to Wilkinson. But yet again, they do. Didn't learn their lesson. He'll weave his way 53 yards, and the punt return TD makes it 14-0 Roland Story. Roland Story blows him out of the water 62-31. I-35 versus Centerville. It is a pink out in Truro. Even got the pink flamingos <laughs> out there for the night. Looking great. <laughs> Tie game at the half. Great game. Third quarter, I-35 at 21-14. I-35's Grady Dodds picked off. Oh no. By Connor Stevens. Uh, that's a lot of information to process right there. I saw uh, sooner. <laughs> Centerville here uh, getting in on the action, but it's I-35 winning at home, 35 to 20. Don't go away. When we come back, we have fan of the week, and this kid went all out, I promise you. Get caught up on local news, originals, and more. Download the very local app and stream for free today.
Welcome back. Here's the fan of the night. Kids out at Roland Story had their faces painted for homecoming. Yeah, they certainly did. And our man Glenn found found Jackson Ball. <laughs> And he, I mean, five o'clock shadow. I don't know how old this kid is, but he is well ahead of the curve. He looks great. I wonder if he knows how to shave yet or what? <laughs> yeah, he just takes a towel and wipes it off. That's, <laughs> that's how he shaves. There's so many great fans out there, uh, so many great games. Uh, make sure you head to our app and, and website and enjoy all the coverage we just had right now and all the more scores. Yeah, doesn't get better than this week six. That's right. For Shannon Earhart, Scott Rice, for everybody else out there, thanks for watching. Have a great night.